thing. If you don't mind, I got yeah, one more other thing. Is if Timothy would uh, let us know how uh, his thing did, his uh, first driver's license. So you, okay, if, uh, yeah, you're I've, just showing us, if you don't know what happened earlier in this week, uh, Timothy, also known as Hillbilly, called in and said that he's going to go to court to prove that he, he does not need a driver's license in order to drive the roads. And I, I'm, I'm only assuming that he must have been pulled over and gotten a ticket for that. And he's uh, challenging it in court. And I haven't heard how that how that went yet. So I just hope that maybe if he's listening, he could call in and, and give us an insight on the, All right. on how to go. Because I did pray for him, and it's worth, uh, uh, you know, receiving my prayer. All right. He did ask for it. So thank you very much for that. Thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriot's Lament. Who's this? This is Mark. Good morning, Mark. Hey, I had a comment on this uh, permanent fund deal. Uh, that oil within the state, whether it's down in Cook Inlet or it's on the North Slope, that oil belongs to the people of the state of Alaska, period. Absolutely, there's no question. It's defined legally in law through our uh, Constitution. That oil is given to the oil company through oil lease contracts. They weren't, got no gun was held to their head to sign on the paper to take that lease. It's entirely up to them to develop it and to produce oil out of it. Yeah, they're going to have some dry wells. They're going to have some producing wells. Um, that's a risk that they accepted and thought that that's a good deal. And if anybody thinks that the oil company's not making any money on this deal, even though the state's getting paid all these royalties out of it, you need to have your head examined. Actually, there's a there's a book that, um, I can't remember the title of it, but this guy analyzed the economics of the pipeline from its inception all the way to today. And in the aggregate, over the entire period the pipeline's been operating, it has been a money-losing proposition. Uh, no one has actually made money in on on the whole on the uh, the pipeline itself. But you're well, right, you're right. The the oil companies looked at the political landscape which they operate in, and they came to the state and they said, okay, we'll drill here. You know, we'll agree to to these terms or whatever. And those those terms are always changing, and uh, the grass is becoming greener elsewhere. And this attitude that um, like we collectively own something, which is bizarre in a in a state that you know we're all supposedly you know these rugged individual Alaskans, but we're actually colossal socialists. Um, that's running them out of the state, and they will leave, and the oil pipeline will shut down, and then everyone will be crying, and there will be you know a bunch of whining. Oh, screw the oil companies! They they left us high and dry, and when that happens, um, they won't care. Well, I had issues with this. Words of the state, people calling in saying that that's my paycheck for my time in Alaska. It is not a paycheck. We're not wards of the state. That is, if you look at what's um, dispersed out of that royalties, there is only a small portion of money coming off the royalties that's actually paid out and distributed in a dividend check to the people of the state annually. The huge portion of that um, royalty money goes straight into the state coffers. And all you got to do is look back. Even just a couple years ago, the state is so flush with money, they don't know how to spend it all. You know, let me, let me ask, hang on a second. Let me ask you a question here. If, if you have a child and your child has income coming in, but you receive that income for the sake of the child and spend it for the child how you think is best, what is your role to that child? Well, if you're the legal guardian parent or one looking after that child, okay. it's entirely up to you to spend that in a uh, All right. So if, if, if you are managing or put it into some sort of account to save it for them to spend okay. as they see fit. So if basically you're taking the money that is the child's money and you're spending it how you see fit on behalf of the child, is that child not your ward? 
My whole point is when I say that we're wards of the state is that the, the state is getting, are you okay? Let's accept. Let's just in, let's put it aside intellectually. We'll accept that, that that is our oil and it's our money. Okay, fine. Then we are wards of the state because the state is taking our money and spending it for us how they see fit and then just giving us a pittance back. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, if you, well, take, if you take that yeah, to the logic. Apples to apples and oranges to oranges. That oil well, no, belongs to the people of the state. It if doesn't if belong to the state government. It belongs to the people of the state. And yet the government is doing what with it, my friend? Well, the government has kind of squandered a whole bunch of it. Yep. And government doesn't I'm not squander. happy with the way that they're directing the, the spending of that, but that dividend is just a mere pittance of what, I mean, people can't ram, can't understand how much money that royalty brings into the state, yet they pay all these permanent funds out of it, and it only becomes just a small drop in the bucket at the end. The rest of that money, the state is in charge of, and even though we elect those people, mm -hmm. we don't really have a say in how they're spending it. So it's not a, so. So in a in a situation where you don't have this illusion that you know we all socially own something, like I wasn't even alive when when those uh, wells were first drilled. So how can I own them? It makes no sense. But wait, if you put that illusion aside and you have a situation like they're doing in North Dakota, for example, right? Then who gets decide who gets to decide to spend the money that's made on oil drilling? Like the property well, owner, the property, the, 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 well, the property owners, the property owners get to because they lease. If you're a farmer, you got a big farm, and you're leasing out, you know, a section of your field for somebody drilling. You create the terms for that, right? And you keep the profit for that. And if you decide that you want to make a better road on your farm or whatever, or you want to drill a well or put up solar panels or do whatever the whatever the heck you want, it's your discretion, right? There's no uh, there's no confusion over who owns that, right? It's very clearly defined. That's this is the whole property rights thing, and it's it's funny with Alaskans always advocating for social ownership of this stuff, and then some guy like Hugo Chavez says Venezuela owns Venezuela's oil, and the uh, U.S. government, the federal government, goes ah see they're nationalizing their oil, they're evil. We need to go in and, and take them over, and and Alaskans do that all the time with their own with you know quote unquote their own oil here. It just cracks me up. Hey brother, thanks for the call. We're gonna let you go. Four five eight talk is the next number. Good morning, welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Alan. Alan, what's on your mind today? Hey, uh, this is the best show I've heard. Huh. You, you guys are gonna do this every day. Uh, I, I think it's. Uh, the way you're doing it, you know, having fun with it, clowning around, um, batting things back and forth. Uh, that's the way to interest people and uh, maybe get uh, more people interested in, in uh, whatever. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, more and more and more. Are you going to, uh, when did this program start? When did we start? Uh, Three, three months ago? Beginning of June, I, I think. I think it was our 12th show. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'll have to tune in more often. Well, well thanks. Yeah, well, all right, guys. We do take what we say seriously, but we well, if you, you don't have a little fun with it, you'd lose your mind. Yeah, your head oh, would yeah. explode. And just pop, that'd be it. That's what I find interesting. <laughs> hey, Alan, tell your friends, and uh, we're also available online at uh, kfar660.com, so if you have friends in the lower 48, they can listen as well. All right. Hey, thanks, man. Have a great day. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots of Mint. Who's this? This is Charles. Good morning, Charles. Hey. Oh, goody. Uh, you know, I share, uh, speaking of philosophy, I, my subject is the argument. I share a birthday with uh, with George Hegel, and uh, his Hegelian dialectic, when you argue that way, it always leads to a, the biggest negative. It always leads to the next larger negative. But you probably don't know what day uh, George Hegel was born in 1770. You might want to guess. But, uh, today? Uh, yeah. Sweet. And, uh, he lived till 1831. Anyway, how about philosophy? Jean Jacques Rousseau. He said, men are born, ev uh, free everywhere. Let's see. Men are born free, but they're everywhere in chains. But that social contract book was a load of crap. The guy was a deviant, and, uh, I don't know why people would want to believe. One word about this noble savage, gobbledy garbage, uh, is just, just a waste of time arguing in circles like that. 
So my subject is the argument, uh, and happy birthday, George Hagel. Happy birthday, Charles. Thanks. 458 dog is the number. Say something real quick. Yeah, go ahead. The, uh, back to the oil. If we own it, we should be able to have a say in whatever happens to it. If what anything that I own, I dominate it. I own it. I can sell it. I can get rid of it. I can keep it. I can make it go here. I can make it go there. I can destroy it. I can make it better. If I own something, it's mine. You I can do whatever I want with it. If the st- if I don't own it, so we have to either say, can we do whatever we want with the oil? No. So we don't own it. But if we're going to change it over and say, well, yes, we do own the oil, then the logical end of that is the state is ripping us off. Josh, you, that's obviously, our oil. you obviously don't understand socialism. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're you're a pretty bad American if you're going to trash on socialism like that, Josh. <laughs> Four, five, eight. If we don't, if we Talk. do own it, we should be able to do with yeah, it as that, we please. This, if we don't, no. uh, here's here's the other thing. People, people keep calling it a dividend, okay? Because we're getting paid out on it. The last time I checked, if you want in on a dividend, you kind of have to buy in, right? If you want to get dividends from a company, you buy into that company. You buy stock. What do you get? I mean, what? Do you, how do you qualify? for the permanent fund. All you have to do is live here for a year. That's it. You do not have to have any interest in this state except to live here. Steve, that's the privilege of the state having you on their soil. Well, yeah, I mean, it also... Right, that's... I was I was born after all that yeah. was decided, so it makes no sense. Well, but, like, from any any concept of property rights, even, like, a, a Marxian, like, a socialist exactly. property rights, it, even, it doesn't even, like, make sense in, in light of that. I right. mean, that, you, there's no... There's no there's no homesteading, there's no equal apportioning, there's no... I mean, it's, it's just... If we take the four of us in this room right here, and each of us have children, and we decide that we're all going to... Let's say we all buy this radio station with the four of us in this room. Now, when I die... Does it make any money? Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a big money maker. Okay. okay, big, big money maker. We're all making money, we're all happy, okay? So we're not talking about this radio station. No, right. <laughs> Actually, we are. Let's say with the four of us in on this radio station, if when we die, Dave only has one child, Aaron has two children. What do you have? You have three? Yeah. Now, I have, I'm have. i going to have seven kids here in a couple of days. Holy moly. Josh, you have eight kids. Eight. Now, if you take Actually, those... better yet, I, I have none. Let's just use that example. All right, this is really, that example. Really, All right, yeah. there's four of us. Right. And we have those four equal shares in the station. If when we die, we pass on those four shares to our children, shouldn't my seven, the, my, the seven shares of my children be divided up from that one share that I had? And so, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And so, so, so the eight shares of Josh's kids that should be divided from the one share that Josh has. Yeah. The three shares from Aaron's kids should be divided from the one share that Aaron has, and the one share that Dave has, when, if he leaves it to his wife or, or Goes his, state. whatever else, that that <laughs> one share is still pristine as one share. Yeah. However, what's happening here with the PFD is that every single year you tally up all the people that are here, and everybody gets an equal share. That's a pretty good analogy, Steve. Yeah, I, How, that's basically it. Okay. In the state. How yeah, but, is that right? Well, the one, you know, it's all based on, like, these false premises. The guy the guy who uh, was saying, um, you know, the PFD is a pittance, um, I, I agree with him on that. I, I think it exists to uh, keep people from looking at the state's budget. And how big that yeah, is. It does. It I does. mean, if if you took the the state's budget and you divided it by the number of people in the state and you implemented a state income tax or something to cover it, we would have one of the highest income taxes in the entire nation. And we would have people going nuts. Right. And, and we so have more people going to North Dakota faster than you. <laughs> right. So if you have a little, you know, if you have some some alms thrown at at the people in a way that doesn't make any sense, like you've described, um, it keeps people distracted from. From that, and and of course, you know, yeah, you know, the oil companies or whoever agrees to that, maybe they'll implement a gold tax here in a while. That wouldn't surprise me, uh, because it's our gold, right? Even though we don't do any mining, mm-hmm. at least I don't. Uh, that will serve to push people to where it's cheaper to produce. That's where they're going to go, right? And so the the whole thing isn't, you know, uh, the the oil companies are getting screwed. Poor them. They're, they're leaving, right? That's what's happening. You go and and the more they leave, the more the screws get tightened because it's like our revenue shrinking. We got to tax them more, and it's it's just a total self defeating thing. Once you bring it back.